Hi everyone, it's Zach Beck. Today I want to talk to you about how to use credit cards responsibly. And this is an important topic to discuss in our society because in the United States right now, over 41% of US households currently have some form of credit card debt, averaging approximately $6,000. What we're finding is that most people have credit cards, but they don't know how to use them responsibly. Now, I know it's very easy to say that all credit cards are evil or you shouldn't have one. And there's some credence to that argument that's more on the Dave Ramsey side of the discussion and I totally get it. If you do not want to have a credit card, that is fine with me. I understand where you're coming from. But if you are like the majority of Americans, you have some form of a credit card, it's important to understand what the benefits of a credit card are, but also most importantly, how you should use your credit card to gain the most benefits possible, but also to make sure that you never fall into debt. What I want to do today is share the benefits of what credit cards can provide you with, and also most importantly, how you can use these credit cards responsibly. So we're going to take some time, dive into those details and understand how you can achieve your financial goals by being a responsible steward of the resources that you have. So let's jump into it right now. All right, before we jump into how to use credit cards responsibly, let's first talk about how credit cards work and how you can utilize them and understanding their benefits. So first of all, how do credit cards work? Money on a credit card is basically an advance loan. When you use a credit card in a transaction, you are not spending your own money at that very moment. A different credit card company is giving you the money to spend in that instance. Then at the end of the month, you are supposed to pay the remaining balance back to the credit card company. And here in lies many of the problems because the credit card companies will often offer, offer you the opportunity to pay the minimum payment on that balance that they have given you. For example, let's say you bought a $100 item at the store on your credit card. Then at the end of the month, they have the option of paying the minimum payment. And say, let's say that payment is $10. So then you pay $10 instead of the full 100. What happens then is you have $90 in debt owed to the credit card company. So not only now do you not owe $90 to the credit card company for that transaction that you purchased, what you also now owe is the interest on top of that. And the interest for credit cards can be staggering. They can upwards be sometimes above 30%. So my encouragement to you, just kind of have the flashing lights blinking in front of your eyes when you think of that purchase you're about to make on a credit card, know that you have the money in your bank account at the end of the month to pay that entire balance off. Otherwise, you might find yourself in a significant financial burden. So understanding that the money you're spending on a credit card is not yours quite yet. It's basically an advanced loan. If you're able to be responsible with your spending and be accountable when it comes to your budget, then there are three good reasons for you to have a credit card. The first benefit is security. And that would be because when you purchase something with a credit card, you have more security than when you purchase something with a debit card. And that is due to the Fair Credit Billing Act passed by the United States Congress, which basically provides that all fraudulent charges on credit cards go back to your account. So if someone steals your credit card and makes a transaction with it, you are protected. Whereas if someone steals your debit card and makes a transaction, you are not protected by the law. So what I would encourage you to do is that if you are able to maintain strict spending habits and you're not going to ever run up your account and run up your balance and not pay off your bill on a monthly basis, if you're going to be diligent and respectful, look at the security benefits of a credit card. Now, on the other hand, if you just want to use your debit card, make sure that you're mindful of where it is at all times because you never want someone stealing that and using it. So they're very approaches you can take. I'm just saying that security is one great benefit of a credit card. Another benefit credit cards offer are specifically in the form of rewards in either miles or cash back that they offer. Now I want to be very clear to you right now that you are not going to get wealthy by earning credit card miles or by having cash back on your purchases from a credit card, but they are small rewards that you can gain. And if you know how to use them properly, then it could be beneficial for you. But I just wanted to clearly state that these companies do offer an incentive for you, but this incentive can also incentivize more spending than you normally would. So 
my encouragement is that only use your credit card for the sake of rewards if you have a very specific goal you're trying to achieve, like a flight that you wanna get or something like a hotel or something to that extent. But also be mindful of the fact that you might have to spend significant amounts of money in order to gain that benefit. Whereas you could have just gone and purchased the airplane ticket yourself or purchased the hotel room yourself, whatever it looks like for you. That's why I personally like to do the opposite of a credit card when it comes to using my transactions. I do what's called Acorns, which is basically an application that links to my debit card. And what I do is that anytime I make a purchase with my debit card, the remaining balance, so let's say I purchase something for $10.50, it'll round up my purchase to $11 and take that remaining 50 cents and invest it into the stock market. So that's another benefit that I find to be even more significant than miles or cash back, but it's just something to be aware of when it comes to credit cards that you do have some benefits that come with them. Now the last and most important benefit of having credit cards is in our society, we all need credit and specifically in the form of maintaining a good credit score. And there are different approaches you can take, but you need to have a credit score in order to be able to apply for a mortgage, in order to be able to apply for a car loan, and generally sometimes for going and doing something as simple as being able to rent a home or do something all along those lines. And I really think that it's not necessarily fair that in our society that everyone needs to have a credit score specifically because you have to have debt in order to you know, accrue more debt, it just doesn't really make sense. So what I would say is that really, if you're just looking to establish your credit right now, specifically at a young age, have one credit card, maybe just purchase your gas on it or make your grocery purchases on it or do something else like that, something that you know you're going to have to do. Don't use it for extravagant purchases and then make sure you pay off the entire bill at the end of the month and then you'll begin to gradually develop a credit score over time. Now, I didn't have this full understanding when I was 18. I was told I needed to get a credit card to develop a credit score in order to buy a home. So what I thought was I needed to spend more in order to have my credit score grow over time and that was incorrect. Uh, you just need to be diligent in showing that you can pay the lender back your money. Now, this obviously opens up Pandora's box is that if you begin to spend more money than you have, then you're gonna get further and further in debt and you'll never have the money to buy a home in the first place or buy a nice car in the first place. And I would always advise that you buy a car in cash versus paying monthly payments never a smart thing to do. So what you think about it from the perspective of how you can be wise and diligent with your resources, try and do everything you can to understand that developing your credit score might just be for one specific outcome that you have, but ultimately, it's not the end all be all of everything that you're going to do because when you are spending money on a credit card, it just needs to be the same as if it's money on your debit card. As soon as you've spent that money, you should have that money in your account ready to pay it back immediately. So just think about this. If you wanna develop your credit score and shoot a little bit higher, just be diligent and mindful and responsible on a monthly basis and gradually over time, your score will grow. Now that we understand how credit cards work and some of the benefits that they provide, I just wanna remind you of how you can use your credit card responsibly. And first and foremost, most important thing, if you remember nothing else from this video, this is all I want you to remember, pay your balance in full each month. Never let your payments go anything lower than the full amount every single month. Now you might be starting right now listening to this video and you have substantial forms of debt and you don't have the ability to pay the full balance every month. That is okay. Start by doing something more significant than what you're doing on your minimum payments, look at utilizing the debt snowball method or the debt avalanche method, enrolling a program such as Financial Peace University from Dave Ramsey. Or if you want, you can watch a video that I'll put in the link in the description of how to pay off all of your debt, which I made a little while ago. Basically, it's this. Try and spend down your, pay down your debts as quickly as possible by using the debt snowball method, where in which you take as much money as you can and you tackle your first lowest payment debt possible, pay it all off, then then you take that same amount of money you're putting every month to your lowest balance and then you go to your next highest balance, pay it all off until it's done and then keep going up and up and up until you reach your highest balance possible, pay it all off and then you'll be debt free 100%. Debt avalanche method, basically you do the same thing, but you go after your highest interest debt first, then you go to your lowest interest debt. So whatever approach you take, it doesn't really matter to me, just start your track on that direction. But basically you wanna pay your balance off every month, each and every month, that way you're never accruing debt or accruing a balance that's anything more than you can handle. So I just really wanna encourage you, do not do anything other than paying your full amount off every single month. On that note, you also wanna make sure that you never skip a payment. 
So make sure that, let's say if you find yourself in a financial hardship right now, don't skip a payment on your credit card because that will really hurt your credit score. It's very easy to develop your credit score over time, but it's just as easy to really damage it. So make sure that you're consistent, you're mindful, you're paying it off every single month. Another way to use credit cards wisely, if you want to be a bit more, I guess you have a sleuth as it relates to how to find ways in which it benefits you, try and pick a credit card with benefits that match your lifestyle. So if you really are into airline miles, make sure your credit card links with that. If you just are spending your money at the grocery store, try and find something that maybe gives you benefits at that store. But basically there are approaches you can take if you look on Nerd Wallet or you look on the, like the points guy or try and do th some research online with Google, but try and find you know maybe the most strategic approach you can take when it comes to picking a credit card that matches your lifestyle. And I would say that it's gonna be very unique to your situation, but take the time and the research and you'll be benefit, you'll benefit yourself wisely. In addition, you wanna make sure that you charge wisely. Like I said before, make sure that you having a credit card doesn't cause you then to spend money on things you otherwise wouldn't purchase. Use it for your most basic and rudimentary and you know basically your required expenses that you're gonna have on a monthly basis, such as your gasoline, such as your groceries, such as other bills that you might have. Try and pay off the, with your credit card because you're not paying for anything else that you wouldn't otherwise be buying. And that's really basically integrating into the life style approach of being wise steward of your financial resources. So do what you can to make sure that you're charging wisely. Don't go to the mall and think you're going to go and buy new clothing or a new phone or a new computer or something otherwise that you don't have the money to pay for right now because you really need to make sure that you're not you really need to make sure that you're delaying that instant gratification so that way you can achieve your longer term financial goals by saving and investing and actually doing things that are going to benefit you financially long term. With all that being said, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video today. If you wouldn't mind, please like the video. It would actually really help the channel out for the YouTube algorithm. And I would love for this video to get pushed to other people who might need to hear a message like this. In addition, if you have any questions or comments, please comment down below. I'd love to interact with you, get to know you, answer any questions you have, share more information about myself, and be able to carry on a conversation that hopefully is meaningful and productive. Lastly, if you wouldn't mind subscribing to the channel, it would really mean a lot to myself. I'm going to continue to create content that I hope makes a positive impact on the lives of others. And by creating the opportunity for you to subscribe to the channel, I really want to be able to share that journey with you. And lastly, if you do subscribe to the channel, please hit the notification bell. That way you will be notified every single time I post a video, which I do on a weekly basis. So I'd really like to thank you again for taking time to watch the video today. And until next time, I hope you have a great day.